everybody, it's Gina from Orchid and Opal Jewelry and Beads, and I'm here today with a tutorial on the chenille stitch. And why do I love this chenille stitch? I love it because it's easy once you get the hang of it, it works up quickly, and it uses a material that most beaders all have an abundance of, seed beads. So I'm holding this particular bracelet right here. There's different ways you can use the chenille stitch. And by the way, there is a flat stitch and a tubular stitch. And today we're going to be doing the tubular stitch, as you can see, which is hollow, which makes it great for putting on memory wire or for feeding chain through it and making it into a necklace. And this is what we're going to be making today. Um, but I wanted to show you also some more end use of this particular stitch and I took some memory wire and I fed the memory wire through the tube. So I made one long rope and uh, you can see that I did switch up the color pattern a little bit to make it more interesting. And uh, we might go into how to switch the colors on another video. But uh, just some examples on what I've done with it. I did another memory wire bracelet using the chenille stitch. And I do want to point out that it really looks cool when you use contrasting colors. So I wanted to point out the difference between this bracelet here and this one right here. On this bracelet, I did use two different colors of red, but um, you can see I also did the uh, switched off the beads every so often just like I did here but on this one you can't really tell so I really suggest that you use contrasting colors it does make the chenille stitch pop out make it more interesting um, but of course if you want it to be more like this feel free to just use colors that kind of blend together that's up to you but you might not want to waste your time switching off on colors if you do choose colors that are very close. So I hope you all will join me today and we can make ourselves a really nice necklace. For this tutorial, you will need two different colors of seed beads. I'm using 11-0 size. If you do decide to use a different size of seed beads, then make sure that the sizes are at least the same. So if you do wanna go bigger or smaller, just make sure you're using the same size for both colors. I'm also using about eight feet of six pound fire line, but you can use the beading thread of your choice. You'll need a beading needle and jewelry pliers and scissors. Also about 18 inches of 1.5 millimeter chain in your choice of color, as well as your clasp and your jump rings and an optional extender chain and charm to dangle on the end. All right, everybody, hopefully you have your needles threaded and you're ready to go. The first step to making this tube is to start out with a border like this. And this is a border that is going to be two beads high. And we're then going to be using that same color of the border that you choose to do these little dots right here. So uh, depending on how you want your piece to look, go ahead and decide on what color you'd like for your border and uh, the one that will be kind of contrasting throughout the piece like these little pink beads that you see here. So to make the border, you're going to start out by doing what's called a ladder stitch and it's not very complicated. Some of you who are new to beading may not know about that or may not have done this before, but just follow what I'm doing and I promise you, you'll be able to get the hang of it. So we're going to start out, like I said, using the color that we want for our border. And for this piece, I've decided that I'm going to use white. So you want to pick up four seed beads in your border color, pull them down. And you'll notice I am not adding a stop bead to this. You can if you'd like to. I'm choosing not to. But I am going to leave about a six inch tail so that I will be able to go back and weave this tail back into my piece and you won't even be able to see it. Okay, so once you have four seed beads strung on, then you want to go through the first two beads that you added. Okay, so you should have something that looks like this. 
and we're going to finish our ladder stitch with uh, by going through these next two beads. So you can see we're coming out of this end of the top of this seed bead. We're going to go right next to it and then down the seed bead below and pull it nice and tight. Okay, so it kind of made a little loop. Now to finish our ladder stitch and make it nice and squared off, we want to go through this next bead on the left right here and up through the bead above it. So we're kind of making like a little square. Just like that. And then once more, go down the next two beads. So coming out of this bead here, go down the bead right next to it. Just like that. And pull. So you should have a little square that looks like this. Now pick up two more seed beads in the same border color. and go down through those two seed beads on the opposite side where you're coming out. Just like that. And then you're going to go back up through the two seed beads you just added. Okay, now pick up two more seed beads. Just like you did before, go through the opposite seed bead where you're coming out and go up through it. And then go down through the seed bead you just added. Okay, and we're going to do this two more times because we want to have six rows. So again, going through the opposite side where we're coming out. So again, go through the opposite side where we're coming out. Go up through the two beads you just added. And pull nice and tight. Pick up two more beads. Go through the opposite side. and down through those two beads. There you go. So you should have a ladder stitch row of six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now what we want to do is join this together so that we're going to start making our tube so we're coming out of this end here. We want to join it to this end here. So go down. Well, you can fold it in half if that makes it easier for you. Coming out here, we're going to go down through these two beads on the opposite side. Okay, and then up through the next two beads that you were just coming out of. All right, so you can see we made ourselves a little circle here of beads that's two rows tall. And I want to start working on the section that is opposite where my tail's coming off. 
So I'm coming out of this one, which is on the same side of the uh, beads where my tail is. I'm just going to go up through the next two beads so I can get started on that end. There we go. Just like that. So once you have this completed, you've finished your border. The next step is to pick up two of your other color seed beads. You can see you're coming out of the seed bead here. We're going to be working this way to the left and you're going to go down through the seed bead that's right next to it. Just the one on the top. And then go up through the next seed bead on the top of your border. Okay, and then pick up two more black for second color. Go down through the bead directly next to the one you're coming out of. And go up through the next seed bead on the top of your border. Pick up two more of your second color seed bead. Go down through the next white seed bead, your first color. And then you're going to go up through the next seed bead, just like you were doing. But you're also going to go up through that seed bead that is in your second color. So this is called a step up and it's going to allow us to step up and to continue building our tube. So you should have something that looks like this. And now we're ready for the next step. And we're going to be picking up one of our first color and you're going to go coming out of this particular bead right here. You're going to go through this next seed bead, down through it, and up through the very next seed bead. Okay? And what that does is it gives you a little seed bead that's kind of sticking up on the top. And you're going to end up with three of these. Three little white ones. Okay, so let's pick up another white bead. We're coming up out of this seed bead here. We're going to go down through the next black seed bead. and up through the seed bead right next to it. Okay, so we have two white ones sticking up. We're going to do one more for this row, which means we're going to go down through this black one and up through this black one. And then we're going to step up and go through that white one. So if you're comfortable, you can do this step all at once. Just for the sake of beginners, I'm going to do this one at a time. So we're coming out of this black bead here, go down through the black bead right directly next to it, go up through the next black bead you get to, and up through the first white bead that's sticking up. And pull it nice and tight and this is what you should have. Okay now we're ready to go back to our next color. We're going to go back to the black. We're going to pick up two black beads. We're coming out of this white bead here and we're just going to go through the next white bead on the left. 
Once again, pick up two more black beads and just go through the next white bead. And it pops those two right into place, or basically filling in the gaps, putting two beads in between these three white beads. So pick up two more black beads. And coming out of this bead right here, we're just going to go through the very next white bead. And to complete our step up, we're also going to go through the very first black bead that we put on for this row. Okay, so you just completed another row. You have something that's starting to take shape. And let's continue on. And it definitely gets easier or easier as you get going because you're just repeating the same step over and over again. So you pick up another white bead. And for this step, you're going to go through your next black bead, skip over this white one, and go through the next black one, just like that. Okay, so once again, once you've gotten to this level, and we're coming out of this black bead, go through the black bead next to it, skip over this white one, and go through the black bead that is next to the white one on the other side and pull it nice and tight and you have another white bead popped up here we're going to do this again so pick up another white bead go through the black bead right next to where you're coming out skip over the white one and go through the next black bead pull it nice and tight and you have another white bead sticking up so we'll do this one more time on this row and this time we'll also need to complete our step up so we're coming out of this bead, we're going to go through the next black bead, skip over the white one, through the next black bead after that, and then through the white bead that we just put on on this row to step up. And pull nice and tight. And as you can see, you should have three little white beads sticking up on this row. Like we did before, we're going to fill in the gaps. We're going to put two black seed beads in between each of these white beads. So I'm picking up two black seed beads coming out of this white one. I'm going to go through the next white one on the left. Pick up two more black ones. Go through the next white one that's sticking up. And keep pulling your work nice and tight. And we have to do this one more time and also complete our step up. So pick up two more black beads, go through this white bead that's sticking up, and through the very next black bead to step up. Okay, so we've completed another row. We're ready to add our white beads that are going to stick up for the next row. So I'm picking up a white bead. I'm going to go through this next black bead, skip over that white one and go through the next black bead. Pull it nice and tight and it's sticking up. So we're good to go. We're going to pick up another white seed bead. And we're going to go through this black bead right here. Skip over the white one and go through the next black bead. Pull it tight. And we're going to do that again. So pick up another white bead, go through this black bead, skipping over the white through the next black bead. And we're going to step up 
by going through this white bead that is sticking up that we just put on this top row. Okay, pull it tight. So you have your three beads that are kind of sticking up like that. And we're gonna fill in the gaps. So pick up two black beads and go through the next bead that's sticking up. Two more black beads. Go through the one that's sticking up next. Two more black beads. And through the next one that's sticking up and also through the next black seed bead to do our step up. Okay. So the tube is just starting to take shape. It's looking really good. It's got that classic polka dot kind of pattern that's starting. All right. And as you get a little further along, you may want to put a needle on your tail thread and weave your tail thread through the beads, tying a knot every couple beads and then going through some more and tying a knot to secure the tail. And that way the tail is not going to be in your way because it does have a tendency to do that. And it just is nice to get that out of the way if at all possible. You can make your rope as long as you want. You can make uh, a bracelet if you want to instead of a necklace. You can make something extra long that you can feed onto memory wire that wraps around your wrist. You can make it into a bangle. There's a lot of possibilities with this stitch. But once you get going, it's pretty mindless. It works up pretty fast. It looks great. And it turns into a very versatile little tube. And you get faster as you go. Okay, so just keep going like you have been if you need to um, go back in the video and rewatch the beginning where we started. You know, you have that option for sure. When I first started making this chenille stitch, it did take me several attempts. I didn't get it on the first try. So if you don't, don't feel bad. But once you get the hang of this stitch, you're going to keep going until you're happy with the length of your tube and then you're ready to put your border on. And just for reference, I'm going to give you the measurement of my tube that I have here. And by the way, these tubes become a little bit stretchy. And I'm, I'm stretching this all the way out and giving you the measurement of that. And the measurement on this tube is not including the border. It's about <clears throat> five and a half inches or a little bit less. So you can, if you want to make a necklace that looks just like the one that we're going to make today on the video, you can make this tube about five and a half inches long, just as a reference. And the chain is approximately 18 inches long overall, not including the extender. So if you want something about that size, shoot for about five and a half inches, and then we'll meet back here and we will finish our tube on the other side. We'll complete that other border. I'll show you how to do that and then we'll put the necklace together. All right, guys, so I have my tube the length that I want it, and hopefully you guys do too. And we've ended here on this pattern where we've filled in these sections with the two seed beads. So stop at that point, and then we're ready to go ahead and make the border on our other side. Now to do that, I'm gonna pick up four white seed beads so pick up four of your border color and we're going to kind of do a similar pattern that we did before except we're going with four seed beads this time. So I'm coming out of this black seed bead. We're going to go through the next black seed bead 
skip over the white, and then through the next black. So kind of what we did before, except that we added on four seed beads instead of two. Now do that again. Pick up four seed beads in your border color. Go through the next black seed bead, over the white, and through the next black. Just like that, so you should have something that looks like this. And then pick up a final four seed beads in your border color and go through the black, skip over the white, go through the next black, and this time go all the way up through those two seed beads right there that you just added. Kind of like you're stepping up. Okay, so now you have what looks like this. You have these three little sections that are sticking up. And all we're going to do is weave these together. So I'm coming out of this seed bead here. We're going to go down through the two seed beads right next to it. Okay. So we're just weaving these together. So then we're going to go back up through those two seed beads to the left of it to bring them together. Just like that. Just keep following the seed beads. Go down through the next two. Just like that. And then go up through the two on this section that you get to next. Go back down through the two seed beads that you were going through previously. And it's just tacking them together, then go back up the two seed beads to the left. And keep going just like that till you've gone all the way around. Tack these two together. I'm just going to go through these two and make sure these are held together well. Okay, so you see how your end came together just like that. That's what your piece should look like. And at this point we are ready to knot off our thread and weave it back in. And then we can feed our tube right onto our chain. So I'm going to make a little knot right here like that. I'm going to go down through the next two beads and you can do this any way that you feel comfortable. There's no right or wrong other than you want to just make sure that you've tied it off probably at least three times to make sure that your thread isn't going to unravel that you don't have to follow the exact same thread path that I'm using. Okay, so I just made a knot, went through some beads, made another knot, went through some more beads, etc. And you can even weave your thread down through the tube as long as you're following the thread path that's already in place so you're not weaving across because if you did that, the chain wouldn't be able to feed through and you wouldn't want that to happen. So I'm just going to do one more little knot. And then feed it through a few more beads and then call it a day. All right. So let's trim off our excess thread. All right, so I want to measure out about 18 inches of chain. Okay, so I have about 18 inches of chain right here. I'm just going to get my clasp and my jump rings. So we'll be ready for that when it's time. 
And I'm going to attempt to show you myself feeding this chain through the tube and hopefully it'll cooperate on camera because it went just fine before but you never know when the film is running how things are gonna go. So basically what I'm doing is I'm holding the tube up so that gravity helps feed the chain down the tube. And I'm just going really slow and I'm kind of using my thumb and forefinger to open that tube up if I need to. So I'm kind of turning it in my finger, squeezing it around, and there we go. So that wasn't bad at all. We were able to get the other end of our chain through and look how cute that is. I think this would be adorable with like some kind of a little red pendant on it. I don't think I have anything like that, but just an idea that came to me as I'm looking at this. Um, I'll probably put on a similar uh, charm like this because I have several of those. But uh, yeah, I was just thinking of that. That would be cute with the black and white. So lots of possibilities. You can look through your stash and see what you have. If you want to just leave it like this, you can too. I mean, it looks great just like that, but it's always fun if you have any embellishments or charms to look through your stash and see what you have, and it just really kind of takes it up a little bit. And I also just want to show you guys up close how you can add an embellishment if you're not sure. So on this necklace, I just added a jump ring onto a point that seemed like it was the center of my rope. And I just attached it, you know, through some of those beads there so that it would kind of hang down from the middle. And then I just added my charm and closed the jump ring. So it's really as simple as that. Okay, so let's finish our piece. And I'm going to take my pliers and I'm going to open up this jump ring. Just like that. I'm using two pair of pliers to open the jump ring and we're just twisting it apart. We're not actually uh, pulling it apart. That's just a best practice when you're dealing with jump rings. Okay, and on this side I'm going to add the lobster claw. And just twisting it back. And then on my other side, I'm going to add one more jump ring. And this is the point also where if you want to add some extra chain for extender, that you can do that as well. And I will do that off camera because that's pretty self-explanatory. But I will get this extra jump ring on here just so you guys are able to see the finished piece closed up and looking good. It's twisting this closed. And it is as simple as that, you guys. So once you are familiar with the beautiful chenille stitch in the round, the possibilities are very great. You can, as you just saw, use this variation and add it onto some 1.5 millimeter chain or you can make it into a beautiful bangle bracelet or you can make yourself a nice long rope necklace where the whole thing is chenille stitch or you can feed it on memory wire make a nice big long tube and make yourself a coil on memory wire and feed it through just like you did with the chain uh, lots of possibilities. So I may be back again in the future with another chenille stitch tutorial where I show you how to switch off the colors. So just like this one that I made, I may in the future just do another tutorial where I do a memory wire bracelet and show you how I switched off. But if you are an avid beater, or if you feel like you got the hang of it and you want to experiment a little bit, feel free to try that as well. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I really appreciate you guys being with me for another one. It's always fun to share these techniques and tricks with you guys, so I hope it was helpful. 
please feel free to leave me a comment down below or a question. I always enjoy hearing from you all. And feel free to hit that bell button at the top and you will be notified of my future videos as I post them. I do try to post about three videos a week at this point, so I have lots more to come. Lots of fun beaded jewelry, subscription box unboxings, lots more tutorials, lots more bead hauls in store. So stick with me and I hope to see you guys soon on my next video. Bye guys. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. I would also love for you to follow me on Instagram, Pinterest, Facebook, and Etsy, Orchid and Opal Jewelry. Thanks for watching.